Good morning, everybody. I'm reading nice and early in the morning today. Still windy, and I'm still in the city, so you might hear lots of building noises going on behind me. Today, I'm reading the book called Willem, a Birarong story. I hope I do this book justice because I'm going to speak in a little bit of Indigenous language. This book is teaching you some of the Australian animal words in Indigenous language. So I hope I pronounce them correctly. Let's have a look at the blurb. As Nua rises, Nua is the sun, Unjul soars over mountain ash. Unjul is the eagle, flying higher and higher as the wind warms. Below, Birarung, which is the river, begins its long winding path down to Palamwarin. Palamwarin is the salt water. So it's where the clean water meets the salt water. Now this is a CBCA book for this year. So you may not have even seen this book out in the shops yet, but it is beautiful. And I love that the authors, Auntie Joy Murphy and Andrew Kelly, have taken the time to teach us some language. And the beautiful illustrations by Lisa Kennedy are pretty spectacular and pretty special in this book. All right, let's see what's going to happen in this story. Look at this page. I love these paths. Oh, you see that? Me no live it, Yarra, my country. There's no mountains for me on the Murray. That was written by William Barrack in 1874. That's a very long time ago. As new arises, turning clouds over the distant city red, Bunjul soars over mountain ash, flying higher and higher as the wind warms. Below Burung begins its long winding path down to Palamwiram, what worrying. We're going to have to concentrate on these tricky words. Deep in the Yaren, Wallet comes home to sleep in a bark lined nest inside a hollow tree. Who do you think a wallet is? Yeah, it's a possum. Panmin falls on Jerang. So Panmin is rain and Jerang is, I think it's the leaves of the trees. I'll show you how I know all this in a little while. It flows down Wirup and soaks into Yemenen Beak. Uh, so it's soaking into the ground and Wirup, I think, is the bark. It's running down the bark. As more rain falls, Barn begins to flow over Yemenen Beak and gather into Yaluk. Barn is water. Nearby Boroin, Boroin are the beautiful birds, perch on Kombadik, which is leaves, anxiously calling to her mate in his bright blue breeding colours. Oh, so this one, this bird here is the Boroin. The Boroin is, oh I can't remember, I'll show you in a minute how I know all of this. He flits from frond to frond, chasing insects. Soon, Yaluk joins with Yaluk and becomes Birarul. So there's different paths winding down and they're all joining together to meet. Young guy fly down the valley. What do you think young guy might be? You're right, it's a black cockatoo. With great slow flapping wing beats, searching for the pines planted where Birarol has been dammed. Pine cones are rich with seed. There's also some rosella there, but I don't know what they are in language. But these Yangai are the black cockatoos. Now, this story is actually about Birarol, which is the Yarra River. And over time, man has done some pretty what they thought was important things but they dammed it up which has stopped the flow of the river so it hasn't helped the animals very much. Where Burrung begins to run through farmland, Maram resting on soft forepaws neatly clips Bua from her pouch. Murum looks out. So Maram is the mum, Murum is the baby. Can you see over here? And soft forepaws. 
they're called as well because they all have soft forepaws. And buath is the flowers that it's clipping with its teeth as it's eating. I love these drawings and paintings. The details are just beautiful. Look at all of the animals and there's the people. Looks like a nice place to live. Hidden behind tangled roots in the bank of Birrell, Dulai Wurrung lies in her burrow. Who do you think Dulai Wurrung is? Yeah, it's a platypus. Curled around her newly hatched babies. I love these drawings because they show what's actually hiding under the ground. Lots of different animals. Here's Grandpa telling yarns to his children, grandchildren. Wah, fly along Birrung with his brothers, making his slow high call. Wah, wah, wah. What animal do you think that might be? Drawing out the last note so everyone can hear. Now I'll tell you a story about that. I have already read this book once before, but I had to stop and read it again because of the wah. The wah was so noisy you could not hear me reading the book. The Black Crow. He's probably pretty important in the food chain somewhere, but he's also very annoying, especially at school when I'm trying to teach as well. From her long burrow in the bank of Birrell, Warren comes out to eat. In her pouch is her young one. Her pouch opens backwards so she doesn't flick dirt when she digs. What do you think a, or let me say it right, Warren is? Yeah, a wombat. And their pouch is put in backwards because they're always digging in the dirt and you don't want to be flicking dirt into the baby's pouch. That's an interesting science fact, isn't it? I love the butterfly and the dragonfly. There are so many animals when you look at these pages. And here are the children doing some fishing, going for a walk. Tajeri sleeps snuggled in a nesting box fixed to a garang. Remember, garang is a tree. What do you think a tajeri is? Mm, I think it's either a flying fox. Yeah, I think it's a flying fox. He dreams of glide, oh, sugar glider, gliding from tree to tree and of sweet nectar and tasty insects. This is a tricky book even for me because I have to remember what each word means. <clears throat> Near the city, Bathmoo shares a nest with eight little ducklings. Well, that's an easy one, isn't it? Bathmoo is duck. And she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little ducklings. We've had little ducklings at our school. Every year we have more babies born and they wander around because we actually have a creek that joins our primary school and our high school. In the evening light, Bogon scurries along the edge of Birrarong looking for dinner. Oh, what do you think Bogon, Bogon is? A water rat. Maybe a tasty fish or two. Drips fall from his waterproof fur. He flicks his thick white tipped tail. Oh, I like that. I didn't know they had a white tipped tail. I like all the birds. There's children there. There's the eagle again. Oh, they're doing some rowing and some black swans too. So many details in these beautiful paintings. As newer sets, which is the sun, Wadjul floats on the surface ready to dive. Wadjul, what do you think Wadjul is? A pelican? She watches carefully for the silvery flicker of a school of anchovies. She can surprise with a scoop of her huge bill. Sharp-eyed Bunjul soars overhead, watching everything spread out beneath him. Fresh water, which began its journey at Panmin, falling on Jereng, mixes into Palam Warim. Birarung is Willem to, me, to many. So, this is Pan. Uh, what did I say? Palam Warim, which is the salty water, and now. The Burrung, which is the Yarra River, is flowing in and they're meeting together, which is what they're trying to say here. Birrung is Willem too many. 
So they are joining together. I like this little boy reading his book in the sun. That is a beautiful picture. And this is how I knew all of the meanings of those words. You don't see this in many books anymore, but this is called a glossary. A glossary can tell you the meaning of the words that you might not understand. So this is how I knew that Nua was the sun. And Bunjul was a wedge-tailed eagle. And Birarong is the word for river. And it's often referred to when they're talking about the Yarra River. And Palam Warin is the salt water bay. Ban is water. Yemenen Beak is the earth. Yaluk is creek. Boroin is the fairy wren. Kombadik is the tree fern. Um, what am I up to? Young guy is the black cockatoo. And Wa is the raven or the crow. And Maram is a grey kangaroo. And Buath is grass. And Muram is the joey of the baby kangaroo. And Warren is wombat. I love that they're explaining these words. So fun to learn another language, isn't it? Tajeri is the sugar glider possum. And Garang is the eucalypt. Bogon was the water rat. And Bathmu was the wood duck. About jo, Joy Murphy Wandon is the senior Aboriginal elder of the Wunjeri people of Melbourne. And Auntie Joy is a storyteller. And in their culture, they show respect for their elders by calling them aunties and uncles. Andrew Kelly also grew up along the Berurung in South Yarra. He's passionate about looking after the river and he likes to be a river keeper. So he makes sure that everybody knows that we need to take care of it. And Lisa Kennedy is the illustrator and she feels very connected to the water and she came from Tasmania. So they're the three people who got together and wrote this beautiful, amazing book and I'm so glad it was on the CBCA list because there's not very many books out there that actually speak the language and teach us the language. So I really recommend getting this book. Thank you for joining me today and I'm sorry about the noise in the background. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.